Today I'm going to talk about Google Forms and their place in the classroom. So if you are in your drive and you go to new and you pull down to more, you can actually get to Google Forms. Google Forms are great because they give you a quick and easy way to survey your audience. You could use it if you were um, maybe voting for positions, if you want to give a quick and easy quiz, uh, if you want an informal assessment, and I'm going to suggest that you use them for what's called exit slips. So at the end of your lesson, you could just quickly have kids go out and they could answer a few questions about whatever your lesson was, and you can gauge if they understood your lesson or not. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to title our form. So we're going to title it Exit Slip. And I have one made up already that's about ethos, pathos, and logos, which are rhetorical appeals that my class has been talking about. So we're going to come down here and we can actually type in the question right here. So we can say this type. Okay, then this is a multiple choice question. So you just type in your options down here and you can just click to add another one. Okay, um, and then they can they can go ahead and answer that. And you could keep adding uh, questions like that. In fact, when I'm doing multiple choice, if I have, I'm going to use the same questions. I go up here to duplicate and I would just duplicate that. One thing though that you don't want to forget when you're doing a Google form is to put a place for the person to put their name and <clears throat> their first name and last name because it's going to make it easier for you to see who actually filled out the form. So on this one, I didn't do that right away. So I'm going to actually add an item down here and I'm going to type in name. Now this isn't multiple choice, instead this is text. You can see all your different choices there of different kinds of answers that you can get. So I'm going to click text right there. And sometimes I put first name, sometimes I put um, first name, and then I do another one that says last name. It's really up to you and how you want your form to be designed. So you can keep adding as many things and as many questions as you want. You can do page breaks, you can do all sorts of things in here. Once your form is over, you come down here and you can show a link to submit another response. You can check that, leave that on or off. Publish and show a public link to form results. So if you want your people who took your survey to be able to link to the results and see them, they can. Or if you want to allow them to go back in and edit the responses after they're submitted, you can do that as well. We're going to click on send form. And then you have a choice here to publish a link. Um, to share the link via very many uh, social media or to actually send it directly to a group or to an email. So I'm just going to type in my other Google email right here. And that's going to send a link, uh, send a link, actually send the actual survey to me. You can put a message in here if you want to the people. And you can see here, include form and email is clicked. So I'm going to click send and I'm going to say, yeah, it's okay. This is out of my district, but I know this person, so it's okay. Um, and then you're also going to get often a pop-up that will ask if you want to be put into a spreadsheet or if you want it to be put into a... Um, just keep it in form. Now, I already have a form in my Google file that I did as a sample so that you can see what the spreadsheet looks like. So the form looked like this. This is a more developed of what I was showing you. This is what the form looked like. And you can scroll through. You can see I had all multiple choice. The results come back to me in this form. I had two people do this one. One is me so that I could be the key and then the other one is another student. So these are all of the responses to the questions. Now there's a great add-on called Flubaroo that you can go up to here. You can enable Flubaroo in the sheet and it's actually going to allow me to grade this sheet. So we'll go up to add-ons now that it's enabled. And we're going to tell it to grade the assignment and it's simply going to ask me a couple questions here. Step one, it's going to ask me how many points do you want each question to be and what is the purpose of some of these questions in here. Okay, So you can see the ones that were questions are points. This just tells me 
that that's identifying the student. We're going to press continue. And then it's going to ask me, okay, which students is, should I use as a key? I put my name in there as a teacher. I took the form and put my name in there so that I know that that's the key. I'm going to continue. And now it's grading the actual form. And it's going to give you a summary. Now this student did not do well. They didn't get any of them right. So that would be a sign to me as a teacher that, hey, I didn't get this lesson across. You know, I'm going to have to reteach it. That was actually just a fake student. Everything's okay. My students know the difference between ethos, pathos, and logos. It will also give you a summary, so I'll tell you how many points it was, the average points it earned for your whole class, so if you had more people in there, how many submissions it counted, and then the number of low-scoring questions. So you'll be able to tell which questions kids need help on. So this is a really nice feature in Google Forms. Um, not only can you print it into a, a sheet and have your results placed that way so you can really compare your students, but you can also use this Flubaroo add-on. I hope that my discussion of forms helps you. I really think it's a great thing to use in your classroom.